Dear companions, every effort is towards driving outcome and achieving that at scale. To gain some more inputs on achieving scale and outcomes in learning, a platform story, please welcome Dr. Yogesh Kumar Bhatt, Executive Vice President and Business Head, Stackroot, in discussion with Anil Santhapuri, Director of Learning and Development, CGI, Shankar Maruwada, Co-Founder and CEO, Step Foundation, Thirumala Arohi, Senior Vice President, Head, Education, Training and Assessments, Infosys, and Uday Singh, President, Global Products and Solutions and Delivery at NIIT Limited. Over to you, Dr. Bhatt. Thanks a lot, Dilip. Uh, good morning, everyone. And um, from my side and from this panel side, uh, again, a warm welcome to Confluence 2022. And in particular to this very interesting session where I'm joined with uh, stalwarts uh, from the industry, uh, as you can see. And a very interesting topic, uh, platform is very central to a a lot of what is happening today, uh, most certainly in the learning space. Uh, that, of course, is our focus here. Uh, let me first uh, just give a uh, brief introduction to this session itself before I start with uh, my specific questions to the very highly empowered panel we have here. Um, if you look at learning space and we can go back decades, right? And more specifically, skill-central learning. We have um, two type of challenges. Now, one challenge, uh, I mean, what makes a learning successful, finally, is the outcomes of the learning. So, and the outcome in a skill-central learning, as I said, you know, somebody with deep skills, somebody who can go, uh, go out and deliver on whatever he or she is supposed to do. Uh, someone, uh, for example, uh, if you look at, uh, say, IT and you look at the, the, the training which happens for the fresh graduate hires, the focus is the outcome should be that they are day one deployable, day one ready for uh, projects. Right? On the other hand, uh, if you look at some of the reskilling and the upskilling for the existing engineers we do in the IT segment, the focus could be uh, increased productivity, uh, increase maybe billing rate, uh, increase deployment percentage, things like that. Those are the outcomes which are expected, right? So one thread is uh, outcome focus. The second thread is, of course, you know, scale. Uh, how do we scale? If a classroom, a traditional classroom program uh, typically is, is limited by a scale. A traditional classroom is also, uh, as we understood separately, and I think in some of the sessions we spoke about, is also limited by not having enough outcome focus unless, of course, it's designed appropriately. Now, uh, on this side, if you look at uh, examples, um, there are not many examples. Uh, where both the problems are solved together. Uh, there are enough examples, and at least in Stackroot, we have been highly focused on that for last six years of our existence to focus on outcome. Each and everything we do, we start with outcome uh, and then build uh, every aspect of the program to deliver that outcome. Right? And with, with some success as, as some of the credentials from our learners and and many of our corporate partners uh, show us. On the other hand, for a scale, one of the things which happened a couple of years back, maybe about a decade back, the advent of uh, MOOCs. And MOOCs were, of course, supposed to change the learning space. And in, in, in parts, they had done it, definitely. Uh, they have really taken some of the top level uh, content, right? You know, some of the best academicians of the world what they're teaching, they've taken it to thousands and thousands of learners. And of course, you know, that that's absolutely an astonishing thing to achieve. But at the same time, if you look at it from a learning outcome perspective, uh, they, they have not been very successful. And, and that's not me taking a view here. That's the data. Uh, if you look at the, the percentage completion of MOOC itself, and there are various industry estimates, most of them run into uh, either single digit percentage 
or sometimes very low two digit percentage. So basically, someone will say 8%, someone will say 12%, 14%, but it's not more, more than that. And that's the completion of the program. Now, how much that leads to a person who is skilled and therefore can perform what he or she is supposed to do after the end of that program? That's a very different question, of course. Mm -hmm. So uh, the real challenge, uh, if you see today, is how do you make learning outcome centric? Because that's what obviously industry needs. At the same time, how do you scale it? To me, that's that's a question which uh, which haunts many of uh, us in this learning space. Uh, perhaps there are no known right or single size fits all answers there, and that's why we have such an eminent panel uh, who have uh, done work in either one or both of the spaces. And, and I, I, as we go along, we'll see we have uh, some some absolutely astonishing experience which we, we will be able to bring to table here for you today. With that introduction, uh, let me first uh, move to you, Shankar. First of all, Shankar, thanks a lot to you. Um, we have had a great partnership ever since the Stack Route started. Uh, Stack Route has essentially done two things. One, uh, we have created very, very different type of learning programs, outcome oriented, deep skilling, now transfer. That's what our journey in the learning space is. But at the same time, we have been focused on the product engineering, and that's where we have partnered primarily with, with you in actually uh, working with you and your organization each step uh, in development of the that grand digital infrastructure uh, called Sunbird and its uh, original implementation as a platform, uh, which is a highly scaled platform, Diksha, which goes to millions and millions of uh, students and thousands and thousands of schools. And, and I, I would like to hold here because I would want to hear from you about that. Uh, one thing is that is absolutely inspirational for all of us to work with 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 this kind of you know vision and mission which you have uh, to reach millions of learners and actually create a digital public good as I've heard you often talking about it right and and we are very very fortunate to be working on that. Uh, just wanted to ask you what is the background of this initiative? What really triggered this grand platform idea? Thank you, Yogesh. Uh, firstly, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure and an honor to be uh, sharing XTEP Foundation's perspective here. So XTEP Foundation was set up in 2015 as a philanthropic foundation by Nandan Nilekani, Rohin Nilekani, and myself. The senior team comprises veterans who have been part of the Aadha startup journey, uh, who have been behind UPI, architecting UPI, and many other such national level infrastructure projects. So when we came together, we wanted to do something big in the area of education, school education. So what we said was our goal is to reach 200 million children and improve their access to learning opportunities. As you can see, it's a big, big, big number. To give you a perspective, uh, my good friend Thiru is here working in one of India's largest software companies, around 250 to 280,000 uh, people. Now that is one hundredth the size of the school education system at 250 million. So the comparison is Bangalore is to India. So when we're talking of that kind of scale, it is not just more of, it is a completely different problem. And what adds is not just 250 million children studying in 1.5 million schools taught by 9.5 million teachers. The complexity is also that this education happens in more than 20 official languages. It is imparted by more than 60 autonomous boards of education. So the scale here also adds diversity, complexity, uh, very, very federated autonomous administration. So as you can see, it is not a case of solving in Bangalore and then scaling it up to the rest of the country. So what we then decided was this needed a completely different approach. And we decided to leverage the system that already exists. 
the question we asked ourselves was how do we not be constrained by our size we are a small not for profit compared to india size 30 40 people but how do we leverage these the schools uh, teachers all the infrastructure the billion textbooks that we produce every year so in the answer to that question is why we created sunbird it is a massive digital infrastructure open source free to use and this infrastructure was what we ourselves used to partner with the government of india to create diksha which is india's national platform for school education launched in 2017 so from there over a series of initiatives first we solved for access to better learning opportunities through energizing textbooks textbooks are already there and so now you have 650 million textbooks each printed by those autonomous boards in their own languages each of which has 10 to 12 qr codes which is connected to relevant trusted digital content all created by the boards not by government of india or by extep and this textbooks and the digital content are used by students and teachers but solving for that is not solving for quality of content so the next initiative was how do we solve and get high quality content so a controlled crowdsourcing solution was created again using sunbird through which 200000 plus content was contributed by 11000 teachers and organizations but solving for quality of content is not enough you have to solve for capability of teachers that's where a massive teacher professional development solution was created which over the last two years would have trained more than 5 million teachers uh, more than 20 million courses 17 and a half million course completions in 12 plus languages but even training of teachers is not enough because learning outcomes is about measuring learning levels so some more infrastructure was created which allows states to see the learning levels of their children which allows states to measure outcomes and quickly get to know what's working not working so after around 4 years diksha which has a reach of around 180 million children out of the 250 7 and 1/2 million teachers the usage statistics are around 4.4 billion with a b billion learning sessions 52 billion learning minutes of learning with content in 33 languages in five including five to seven dialects of india tribal dialects like gond halbi including content for the hearing impaired 6000 plus courses and all of this is offered to any and everybody in india completely free of cost so diksha has been a huge success in fact many other countries around the world are are learning from it and since diksha itself is a public good others can take it along with sunbird not just countries but other corporates and ngos have also taken sunbird and are looking to replicate and create their own platforms and uh, so it's and we think this is just the first two sessions of a five day test match and it's not a t20 so we have a long way to go but at least uh, the performance in the first two to three sessions is encouraging i'll stop here yogesh and hand it back to you thank you no thank you thanks thanks a lot first of all i mean these are mind numbing numbers and um 200 million children i mean it's it's astonishing and uh, when you shared the usage that's like you know crossing 50 billion learning minutes so uh, i i see right now challenge to even size it just to be um <laughs> share to you but um but yeah absolutely astonishing and and really uh, exciting that you know these are the only first two days of a test match it means there's a lot of more to come and obviously we are uh, we are very fortunate as i said to partner with you in 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 this initiative especially you know this this uh, diksha platform uh, we know that it has really helped the school system and especially the uh, not so well funded government school system to survive through 
this COVID, right? I mean, uh, the kind of societal impact which it made just during COVID is uh, difficult to imagine. So absolutely fantastic work uh, here. Uh, let me with that uh, move to the, the ne next part, right? I mean, uh, when you were playing these two days, so there was another uh, sub match. I don't know what we'll call it T20 or we'll call it uh, one of the sessions in this, this two day test that I'm not very really sure. But with that, let me get to you, uh, Thiru. Um, you are the earliest corporate adopter of Sunbird Digital Infrastructure to create uh, your own learning platform at Infosys. And of course, you know, Infosys is probably 1000 the size of the, the learning uh, school learning system. But, but for all of us, and of course, you know, I've been fortunate to work for a long time in Infosys. Uh, I mean, huge respect to the way a learning system is built there. And uh, the very fact that uh, Sunbird digital infrastructure is adopted by Infosys to take it to 250,000 employees. And I do believe if you go beyond that to students, et cetera, as well, uh, is, is, it, it gives a lot of confidence that, you know, this, this infrastructure doesn't only go to to K-12 segment, which was the, the, you know, maybe the first two days, it also goes to many other places. Uh, my question to you is, what prompted uh, you to adopt this platform, uh, or rather this digital, uh, digital infrastructure to create your platform? Uh, that's first question. And second, uh, I mean, we all know that the school learning is, is so different from what we do at the corporate learning space, right? There are at least two more layers in between from school to college and uh, higher education. And then after that comes the, the, the skill-focused corporate learning, right? So uh, how did you adopt the experience? The Originally, the infrastructure really powered Diksha. So that's where I think most of the components and the focus was. How do you uh, move it to uh, make it suitable for corporate learning kind of environment? What do you do? Absolutely. <clears throat> Thanks, Yogesh, for the opportunity. It's always great to be discussing, especially things around learning and that too with stalwarts like Shankar and uh, Anil and others, right? Uh, we are very fortunate to be working with uh, Shankar, Pramod and Sanjay Proet. Uh, these are all, I would say, three wonderful architects of creating a great learning ecosystem. But uh, to give the, the genesis of what happened and why we went to Sunbird, uh, you know, as you rightly said, Yogesh, Infosys is known for its learning and educational infrastructure. We are the world's largest corporate university. Mysore campus is just an example of what can be done when a corporate decides that employees needs to be continuously be reskilled. And the concept of lifelong learning was there much before it became a buzzword today, right? Uh, this is the vision of Infosys founders on how they basically looked at it. But 2017 is a time frame when uh, um, uh, we were fortunate to have uh, our chairman Nandan come back to Infosys. And uh, one of the first things that he was looking was, how do we start thinking about uh, uh, a culture of anytime, anywhere, not just for learning, but culture of anytime, anywhere for anything that we do within the corporate as well. And at the time, uh, see, we already had a few learning platforms, uh, learning systems within the company, but the idea was to basically make it anytime, anywhere. I think that was the first uh, simple mandate that was given. And then we started looking at what is it that we want to build. We did a couple of weeks of design thinking sessions with different employees, uh, managers. We did that with leaders. In fact, we spent time with our clients as well, understanding what exactly the market needs or for the talent, right? And this was done in 2017. And when we started doing that, uh, we were obviously guided by Nandan and then we had a chance to interact with uh, the XTEP team, especially the Sunbird. And uh, what really helped us uh, leverage Sunbird was the focused thinking around platform scale uh, mindset, right? It is not just about, uh, initially when we were thinking, maybe we would have done a good job, but our thinking would have been more a product think or more of a solution which fits into a particular scenario or a particular need. But the best part for my own experience was with Sunbird, with Sunbird was how do we first think platform? How do we think about scaling it for large? And Shankar already articulated the size and everything. 
so the the first thing was scalable platform which can actually be something which is not only taking the needs for that day as in 2017 but even continuous visioning around how you can actually imagine that was the first one the second one if you have already looked at sunbird there are fantastic things like extensible schema the content architecture i think content architecture is one of the best part where the micro learning is basically first created and then you create multiple collections around that and i always give this analogy of um, a song a, a kind of an album and artist and a genre so how you can actually imagine if you kind of design your content and then build the collections around that then the next part which we really loved in sunbird uh, based on what uh, sanjay and uh, remod articulated was the concept of observability which is nothing but heartbeat telemetry i think uh, uh, we all know we have been using digital systems and everything but uh, how do we start looking at creating those data emits for every action that happens on the platform and then how do you use those to create meaningful insights for the learning department for the employee for the manager and everything right and and outside of all of this uh, the other important thing was you know um, this is again a favorite word of nandan i always like which says don't fall into not invented by me syndrome which means if there is something good out there try and see how you can leverage and uh, open source adoption especially by corporates at that time was not necessarily that very good right whereas uh, there was already a great product or platform that was available it was open source it was available for anyone to use and that also helped us to kind of embrace the thinking around open source architecture and open source systems and everything few other things just so that everyone understands the power of sunbird and what we have embraced is the concept around how you can actually look at it as unbundling of the platform so that platform itself doesn't solve everything but platform gives you an ability to create lot of sub apps and we have leveraged that power very well when we when we created lex uh, and now wingspan is what we call it uh, uh, from sunbird we basically made it as a nice uh, overarching platform ecosystem under which anyone can come up with their own ideas integrate it with the platform and then make the learning experience seem that is one thing the other one which i liked was around the configurability the entire uh, concepts around uh, how do you basically design for replaceability and this is another things that we loved hearing from the sunbird team and the xstep team was don't always plan for extensions look for what is working what is not working how do you break that how do you kind of make it always clean and ready for the ever changing future right these are reasons why we adopted sunbird but obviously when we did that we also wanted to see how do we understand the expectations of the employees and the expectations of employees as we all know the digital natives we are all living in the digital world with digital apps so we took lot of inspiration from netflix amazon all of those and then we said how do we make sure that the landing experience plus the adoption itself is not overweighed by uh, the kind of time you need to spend to understand the nuances around the platform and the entire architecture of uh, user experience was designed primarily looking at what we are already comfortable with ourselves with some of the apps in a personal space and then create something and then we kind of went with that but but all of this was driven around what we call it as four important things i keep saying this everywhere because uh, how you basically look at learning from infosys perspective was we looked at it as more more importantly four important tenets and the first one is making it convenient which means we need to have any time anywhere online or offline ability to learn uh, and then the second one is what we call as relevancy which is making it relevant to employees which means i have ability to integrate content not just created by infosys but anywhere done by our partners integrate it curate it and then personalize it for every learner so that you don't really make it one size fits all but you personalize it and make it relevant for employees the third one what we did was based on whatever we learned and whatever experiences that our employees were looking at we started gamifying lot of things using the telemetry using the configurability and everything we started giving power to the respective managers and portfolio heads where they don't necessarily always say well, learning department is saying this and you have to do this they can create their own stories they can create their own campaign and they can actually gamify it and everything like that and then we also have set up lot of things around 
learn practice and assess model of learning which means it's not just theoretical learning even though you have digital content but you practice by solving real life problems making sure that you are interact with others and all of that right that was the third one and finally it has to be meaningful and it has to matter both for individual and company so we have integrated it tightly with our learning systems to hr systems and all the new initiatives that we did we ensured that data is not just there only in the learning system it was pervasive and it was moving around all the different corporate systems that are important to take care of the employee so it has been a great journey uh, and then the last uh, good news around that was in the spirit of being open source and digital uh, good uh, that shankar talked about we also started contributing back at least some of the things we felt will benefit and these are all wonderful things and uh, all of this is still fresh in my mind uh, even though we are talking about 2017 where it was the genesis and even now i think there are a lot of initiatives uh, which we'll talk in the in the subsequent section thanks a lot thiru and and again it's it's a very inspirational story uh, and of course you know coming from being working in infosys earlier i can understand this this thing which you've mentioned about you know not created by me syndrome uh, I, i i think you know we we do get into that sometimes and and this whole um, digital and open thinking uh, in the world today uh it challenges that and 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 it's 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 great to see that you know this initiative helped you do that at the same time uh very very relevant points uh, you mentioned specifically on how it was adopted uh convenience the relevancy uh your method of learn practice assess and behindly to you know integrate into system so great thank you very much uh for for this response uh with that uh let me move to anil um anil uh, uh we have been working for for quite some time with you in 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 many areas of these you know creating deep skilled uh, professionals and uh, i think we had a very fulfilling journey uh, on that uh, achieving outcomes feeling excited about that and uh, sharing uh, your uh, excitement and our joint successes together uh and at stack root we are all very thankful to you for that uh we of course you know deployed our stack roots program uh, you know platforms such as hops and uh you know uh, stack learn and so on so forth uh, which we do for for any deployment of our programs which which are closely married to our pedagogy model uh at the same time more recently we started this initiative uh where i think you came with uh in fact you came sometimes with with huge pressure sometimes with with, uh, with great vision uh either which way that propelled us and and uh, anything which propels us forward is always a welcome thought uh towards creating this platform for learner insights um you know as we scale uh we need to uh i have been mean, thoughts are very simple right i mean when when you are in a class and i'm sitting right there and 20 people are there i don't need any learner insight any experienced learner professional will look into 20 students and will get insights right but when you get into uh, 250 million what do you do is what shankar is talking when we do, do for 250000 is what thiru is talking let's talk about uh, our scale of a couple of hundreds and there also um, we are challenged the faculty cannot have that and admin cannot have that too unless we have a great learner insight built in and we looked into sunbird this time uh, with you know shankar's thoughts he has given that and you know, look at sunbird uh, as an unbundled set of services you know because we were also um, focused on something else and we had this you know uh, being a partner in the engineering that we had that created by us kind of syndrome in a way which was challenged and we said okay let's look at it as unbundled service like at, let us look at it uh, two of them uh, telemetry framework and data processing pipeline to be to be specific to create this my question to you is uh, what was your uh, key intent uh, of getting into this engagement and also i would request if if we can for the benefit of audience uh, you know showcase well, what is that we are really doing here? thank you thanks yogesh good morning everyone really happy to be here i'll take a minute to give a little bit of business background of why this 
initiative or the partnership we've been having with NIT started is really critical for us. So, you know, we started with graduate uh, transformation and it's always been there in IT industry, but three to four years back, we formed a charter called Human Capital Strategy to kind of see, you know, to create a future proof or future ready workforce. And then it had three pillars, uh, diversity and inclusion, uh, graduate transformation and uh, upskilling and reskilling. And the 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 uh, initiative we have been working with NIT Stackroot actually brings all of these three together. So through the graduate transformation program, we have been actually managing diversity of, uh, you know, uh, representation. That was one side. And then uh, through the graduates, three to four years back, is was heavily we started investing in full stack developers uh, skill set and kind of, you know, building the automation bottom up. So that kind of helped with it. And also look at the graduate transformation primarily from the aspect of can we, um, you know, train them so well so that we can improve their speed to competence, speed to deployment, and also not just initial deployment, but multiple deployments. And, and the success of this initiative over the last many years has been, it's a Brandon Hall Gold winner, and we won the Brandon Hall Gold in partnership with NIT. But the success of this program, if I could cite a couple of things, is uh, what we have seen, uh, our graduates who go through this program are actually built equivalent to um, other engineers who are three to six years kind of experienced. Uh, we actually, a significant part of people who go through this program are product engineers who directly are deployed into IP and you know pro product engineering. And most importantly, what we have seen is they are uh, de deployed faster in multiple deployments in significant, like assignment two, three, four. So it's been a huge success story. And again, over the last couple of years, we had to really get the program design from a blend perspective. And then, you know, the program was getting more complicated because now we're doing a blended format. The scale is increasing, you know, compared to two years back, uh, three years back and this year, I think we're actually increasing the size threefold, three to four size, three X to four X. And then, you know, how do you measure effectiveness, efficiency, and, uh, you know, ROI for a blend learning, which is happening at scale? Uh, was very critical for us. And then whatever we did with this program was always my pilot to kind of adapt and you know, adapt to the larger l and initiatives we do at CGI. So it's always been been that way. So that's been some of the reasons why we wanted to have a, a you know, a, a learner insights platform so that it, it gives real-time data and decision-making ability, not just to l and team, to our internal resource management group or hiring managers and leaders so that they could, they could have real-time view into the data. So I'll talk about uh, some quick points about how we kind of uh, adopted the uh, you know telemetry framework. And as I do, we'll also do a quick walkthrough of the system. So I would like to present Learner Insights platform for the audience. So as I do the voiceover, you will see some of the, uh, you know, walkthrough of the platform. So, uh, <clears throat> so the, I think you can see the insights coming up on the screen. That's good. So uh, the first piece was, uh, you know, creating having a data generator through telemetry framework. And the idea was to collect all the data from multiple touch points because this was a blend learning program. So the way it happens is, you know, the way we do, do this program, there's a core training which happens to our graduates who join uh, the organization, but we also do training with them when they're in, corporate, when they're in their campus. So in campus, we have a weekly, when, when we look at the weekly uh, program, we have weekly face-to-face -face touch points, two stand-up uh, meetings with mentors twice a week and multiple check-ins through platforms like Slack and then Git platform and all other, the NIT, Sony, ERP system and LMS. So the idea was to have a data, the data generator to plug in data, pull data from all these variable, various touch points into one place. So that's the first piece. And the second piece is data processing and typically applying the standard ETL process steps, merging data from various factors, applying, you know, cleaning up the data, doing some data synthesis to uh, up, then apply some business rules, which are critical for us. For example, the standard ones being how many cohorts are happening, are they on, you know, the standard at start time and end time, but then actually drill down to a learner level to say, hey, you know, 
you know, because each learner, if they miss the schedule for whatever reasons, especially with COVID, you know, some people are also falling sick, it would actually impact the deployability and billability, right? So, so having view at, at that level, so applying all these uh, business rules at cohort learner level, which technology, plat, you know, which technology are they undergoing training and, you know, keeping an eye on all that, not just for us, as I mentioned, for our resource management group, hiring managers and also business leaders was really critical. And finally, from a visualization perspective, the third piece, the idea is to see, look at the health index at two, two levels. One is at the cohort level, at the individual level, because individual goes through multiple assignments, uh, touch points, and also three toll gate ass assessments, which are really critical to kind of checking their progress throughout for consistency is really critical. And then looking at rolling it up, looking at the data of health of the entire cohort. So those are the three uh, data generator, data processing and visualization, which we kind of apply to create this, uh, this platform. Now, what I would like to do is quickly uh, request Vijay from NIT to Quickly demonstrate a few more key capabilities by doing a voiceover. So, Vijay, I'll turn it out to you. Thanks, Anil. Uh, I think you have given an elaborate uh, information about the dashboard. So, I will I will deep dive into some of the important elements of the platform for uh, to understand what exactly the kind of insight it can provide to us. The, we broadly classified the platform into two units. Uh, first of all, to state uh, one important information is about how is this platform built on technology uh, stack. So it's a complete open source technology stack which we have used it. And uh, we're happy to say that we have used the Sunbird analytics framework for scale and data processing as our backbone. So, <clears throat> so it does save a lot of time for us in terms of architecture design. So we use that framework as is because the pluggable component as for the Sunbird uh, um, and digital infrastructure is concerned. On that, we built the visualizations and, uh, uh, and data products, uh, which obviously is going to be company specific. So that's how this platform has been built in. So broadly, what we said is one, we need to have definite at any given point of time, the health index of a given cohort. So just by one look, we should be able to state, okay, this, this particular cohort group or a batch is in the right track or not in the right track. I think that was a very important aspect we measured and then therefore we kind of created certain amount of visualizations, which, which brings that uh, uh, orientation in one shot. Then second thing is from the point of taking in action items, it has to be at an individual level, not at a group level. So therefore uh, we created uh, capabilities in the platform which can drive down to the level of giving a, a rating at an each individual, whether that particular individual stands at a rating at an A or a B or a C based on some algorithm, which has been agreed between um, <coughs> uh, me and uh, Anil. So we created an algorithm based on which we kind of you know, uh, categorized each of the learners so that a quick action can be taken. So that's the fundamental purpose of it. And the most importantly here, there are two things. Uh, one is the engagement analysis uh, other is the uh, performance analysis, which is nothing but the outcome analysis. So uh, uh, when we talk about engagement, what we mean is that there is a live class session going on, especially in the pandemic times when most of the live class are happening remotely. We do not really know how much of an engagement is happening. Uh, so it is not just about you no know, uh, putting an attendance and then saying, okay, out of 20 sessions, I attended. 19 sessions, so that's a good thing. So it's not the measure of that. We also looked at what is the time spent in each of the session, because it's important if somebody has an internet problem, not able to really spend that much of quality time as part of the session, then possibly we'll have to take some action in terms of helping them. So we looked at that portion of it. And similarly, if you take the other engagement aspect is specifically in the IT environment, where there's a coding practice. So in the coding practice also, we'll have to look at it, whether there is an activity happening on a daily basis uh, so that we take a corrective action in case of any support is required, or, or do we wake up at the end saying, you are not qualified with the, the desired results, what is expected. So we kind of looked at in-process activity as an event so that proactive decisions can be taken at the early stages uh, before it actually you know, kind of goes out of hand. So that's how we looked at, and this is a beta version. Recently, we launched it. And we are happy that uh, Anil is the first customer to use this uh, as a partner for this particular product. Uh, and and uh, more feedback we are expecting from Anil to bring it up to a really on a, a good stage. <clears throat> so let me just go through uh, uh, the platform. So if you look at this, is the summary dashboard. 
uh, which basically gives total number of active batches and learners and pick highlight in terms of what is the average attendance across all the batches and what is the average assignment submission percentage across the batches. So obviously color scheme indicate whether <clears throat> is it in the uh, good rating or a rating which requires an improvement. So similarly from the point of an operational uh, angle, there's a distribution of information given uh, from the point of number of learners in each of the programs uh, at this point of time and number of batches uh, running across the programs at this point of time. Then this is the other health indicator. Uh, what this graph is indicating is across all the batches which are running here, what is the overall running average across the batches and how many batches are below average, how many are above average. So this is an universal benchmark at a, uh, you can say at an organization level against that organization, where are the respective batches. So this gives kind of a health index to figure out who are, which are those batches which requires an Im immediate attention. From here, we take it into deep diving <clears throat> by giving a rating at a ABC uh, rating for each of the batch and in that particular batch, what is the distribution of learners who fall under the A and versus B and C. So if you take the first batch here, we have out of 24, 26, 24 of them actually fall under A and only two of them fall under B uh, rating. So fundamentally it means they are in the 70 to 85 percent attendance rather than uh, 85 plus percent attendance. So this is from the point of class engagement and similarly from the point of uh, submission of assignments because assignments are equally important to measure the outcome from the point of submission of assignment batch wise distribution in terms of what is the rating where they are and other important stuff is uh, this is a <clears throat> density chart in one glance it gives where exactly is the density of our overall learner population uh, position so if you take at the at the this is the marks range so most of them are on 80 plus marks range and most of them are on 90 plus engagement rating. So this is a good health indicator to state by and large they are in the pop, are most of the 80, 90 percent of the density is in the area of 80 plus uh, engagement and 80 plus uh, no, uh, outcome measurement in terms of mark score. So this is the kind of a broad framework what we created which gives in one shot uh, good health indicators to annihilate at this point of time. So getting into second one, which is the learner engagement details. So this is at a each individual cohort or a batch group level where we deep dive in terms of what is for that particular batch and average attendance, average time spent. Here where we measure what is the time spent in a class being on the remote network. And then what is the average score running and what is the on-time submission level of the particular cohort group of all the assignments. So this gives a quick indicator at deep, life, deep dive at a each, each batch level. From here, we go inside into the, what is the batch overall attendance percentage to time spent percentage and how many of them are below, below the range. So this gives a focused attention to each individual. So therefore we actually can uh, speak to each individual and then uh, see, figure out what kind of a support is required. And what is also important is each individual support can be triggered right from here. So if you look at it, each individual has a send mail option here. So we are giving a rating for each individual. Uh, and then from here itself, a communication can be established straight away to figure out if what kind of a support is required. So this is the, this is the kind of an engagement we are created at an individual level uh, from, from the point of class attendance. And secondly, if you look at it here, this is from the point of coding assessments, coding activity, uh, how, how frequently they are connected to Git in terms of uh, committing their code. Uh, this gives an indication in terms of who are an active committers on the Git uh, platform uh, from the point of coding and who are not, who are below the average. And if any technical issues are there in terms of platform, et cetera, the support can be initiated then and there. And uh, in addition to that, in general, overall uh, um, um, uh, dashboard data in terms of you know, uh, weekly attendance and week daily attendance status and uh, kind of a stuff. So all that information are provided here. And last but uh, not the least is from the point of uh, performance uh, engagement. Uh, in addition to the overall um, KPIs of the uh, cohort group, um, 
this throws information in terms of assignment completion percentage, how many of them are completed the assignment, what is the class average, and how many are above average and below average. This quickly gives indicators in terms of the person level, what kind of an, uh, support uh, possibly could be provided. And each further it drill downs the distribution of the marks range for each of the individual for each assignment. This gives a clarity in terms of you know, participation level and uh, where exactly they are standing in terms of their learning outcomes. So, uh, so these are some of the broad uh, capability and a lot more there in detail. Uh, I'm not getting into the operational uh, data elements, uh, visualization, but more importantly, the something which can give an early warning signal uh, so that the appropriate uh, decisions can be taken and then the right track can be maintained for each of the cohort groups. So thanks, Anil, for uh, uh, giving me the opportunity to speak on this subject. Um, thanks, uh, Dr. Butt, uh, and I'll hand over back to you. Uh, yeah, hello. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Vijay. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot, uh, Anil and Vijay. And um, you know, great to see this uh, this development. I mean, what what I really liked about this is that uh, this is built on the principle not on only on insights but on actionable insights. Um, looking at attendance and, and engagement and performance separately uh, allows us to uh, really, uh, you know, uh, take, take actionable inputs. Um, with that, uh, let me move to, to the next round. And uh, given that we are running a little behind time, uh, my request to uh, all of you to, to keep this time your responses uh, to two minutes because that's the, the time we have. And uh, with that, let me move to uh, Shankar, uh, you again. Uh, this round, of course, you know, uh, we will focus on, uh, I mean, so far we focused on here and now what where we are, and now let's focus on what's the future. Uh, so Shankar, in the spirit of that, the question to you is, uh, what is that you are looking at from a step perspective, specifically in learning space? I do know that X step has varied interest, but that this community is primarily on learning the audience today. So in learning space, uh, what is that uh, you are looking at in next two to three years? Thank you, uh, Yogesh. So the X steps way forward is strongly influenced by our past. And in achieving the kind of numbers I talked about, the key is to understand the how of the process, which is how did we design for it? And a phrase I want to introduce into your consciousness is the concept of not blended learning, which we're all familiar with, but blended technology, which means how does technology blend into existing human systems, processes, institutional structures, which are already there. I give the example of uh, Indian education system. So technology has just one component among many others, curriculum, teacher capability, many, many other things. So how does technology blend into existing systems rather than requesting the system to blend into technology? So, and to do this approach is why we created the concept of a set of building blocks, which is what Sunbird is, compromise, is comprised of. And Thiru talked about it and uh, uh, Vijay talked about it. Right? And people can use some or all of these for their own purposes. So this is a process we call as unbundling. So if you break down the whole process of learning into that there is a learning set of processes, there is a helping learn set of processes, teaching, whatever. And there's a managing set of processes, managing learning, administration, examination, credentialing. And each of these three learn, help learn, manage learn can be further broken down until you come to atomic units of value creation. Discovery of relevant content could be an atomic unit of value creation. Observability is another unit of value creation and the earlier speakers spoke about it. So like this, we have around 15 odd building blocks in Sunbird. Some of them contributed by a community which is currently small, but is growing. So in the next two to three years, we see the Sunbird community growing a lot. 
which is the community of contributors the community of adopters the contribute the community of those who influence and in addition to this we are looking at moving into other big problems that need to be solved for india which is artificial intelligence for indic languages right now your access to content and your learnability is limited by your language if you cannot speak read or write english you cannot get access to quality content why should that be the case can we use artificial intelligence create a corpus of data open source models with which like sunbird others can create their own language based learning solutions so that the audience is much larger so artificial intelligence is one big area we are also looking at more solutions that need to be created mentoring at scale assessments at scale and when you see the dots for mentoring and assessments if you can have the ability to do that in indic languages it increases the reach and we are also and all of this is so that we can focus on our core mission of foundational literacy and numeracy because if the seeds of the tree are are weak or damaged the tree is not going to grow up into a healthy tree and also in adjacent areas like skilling with the national education policy talking about the connect between schooling and education so those are the areas that we are also looking at and to end the way we are looking at is thus far we have created something of value to some folks government of india is using it states are using it some corporates are using it startups are using it but a fundamental definition is can we help india become a knowledge superpower by 2040 can we help the country overcome the serious learning crisis we have and get our foundational literacy and numeracy learning standards at par by 2030 and we are confident this can be done not by ek step alone but by all of us working together and what inspires us in our continuing journey is 10 years ago we were trying to solve the problem of lack of identity now 10 years later with aadhar we are the world leaders in digital identity 10 years ago for decades we are trying to solve the problem of financial inclusion and payments 10 years later we have overtaken china last year to become the world's biggest and most sophisticated users of digital payments i am confident that the next 10 years we will do something similar in some aspects of education for which the next 2 to 3 years are very very important to set the foundation and that is what we are focused on and uh, that is what uh, keeps us uh, inspired to keep on going thank you yeah thanks shankar thanks a lot i mean uh, really good to see about what future holds so uday at this brings me to you and uh, i think i will uh, just combine the question for you um, uh, i think there are two parts one is where we are and what we are doing in future from an it perspective you have been involved in uh, various platform initiatives uh, driving uh, different forms of learning in an it so uh, what are your key experiences and uh, where in future do you see uh, our platforms going right thank you kesh uh, good morning to everyone um i i think uh, what what we've seen from the examples that shankar and thiru uh, shared is that from a technology point of view being able to enable access at scale i think in many ways uh, we understand the engineering behind it and that is no longer necessarily the prime uh, driver for future um uh, you know developments i think what we are focusing on increasingly now is what will deliver the actual quality of the learning outcomes and that to at scale so one is enabling 250 million uh, children and 10 million teachers to be able to use technology and incorporate it and the other is to start moving the needle uh, as far as the quality of outcomes is concerned whether at the school education level and which provides the foundation for uh, undergraduate education and which in turn uh, is what corporates deal with and uh, i think therefore there is a lot more emphasis that we are putting on uh, using the uh, advancements in learning science that have happened over the last 50 years 
um, with the current generation of technology. I think many of the innovations that happened in terms of thinking in the 70s, 80s, the technology of that time did not really do justice to them. And I think that is what NIT has focused on. So whether it was our cloud and collaborative learning methodology that enabled the use of distributed you know, technologies to, to create uh, virtual classrooms, peer-to-peer -peer, uh, learning, and, and you know, many of those things. Um, but in the interest of time, there's one thought which really um, you know, keeps us awake uh, I, I think, and which we see as a barrier, um, you know, to delivering uh, fantastic learning outcomes. And I'm reminded of a phrase, um, you know, that Lou Gerstner uh, shared in the context of work, that people don't do what you expect them to do, they do what you inspect. Now, if that's true of work, why will it not be true of learning? So if we were to take that, uh, and, and see how does that learning process actually continue to have integrity over extended periods of time when we talk about lifelong learning, is our ability to actually inspect and validate the learning that is taking place and therefore be assured that it is going to translate into competency that people will bring to their work and, and the better results. I think therefore two or three things that we are focusing on is how do we take mentoring um, and use advancements in AI and machine learning. And it's not a problem that we're gonna solve you know, overnight, but how do we push the envelope so that we can complement human mentors with technology enabled mentors uh, so that each learner can get the personalized attention and more importantly, get feedback on what they are doing, what they're not doing well, what they should be practicing on uh, so that we can help them you know, um, acquire the skills. So to me, that's one very significant area, virtual mentoring and the whole concept of deliberate practice and being able to give personalized feedback. And today that's a very, very human intensive activity. Uh, most teachers and instructors are stressed um, for time in, in, in actually imparting the initial conceptual inputs. And they really don't have the time to see the work that uh, learners are doing and give individual feedback. And what we've seen very clearly is the moment you move away from giving individual feedback, fundamentally the learning process gets compromised. So to me, that's one of the things that NIT will continue to push the envelope on and certainly work closely with the XSTEP team as they are moving to the next level of evolution uh, and going beyond just access to you know, superior learning outcomes. Thanks. Thanks, Uday. Uh, thank you. It's, it's very, really exciting to hear uh, what we have done and what we are looking at now. Uh, you know, we, we are uh, very short on time now, but I just wanted to hear um, uh, some closing comments on the future side uh, from Thiru and, and from Anil in that order. So Thiru, Thiru over to you. Now, uh, you know, you talked about what you've done, uh, but what, what future do you see for, for your Lex and Wingspan uh, over next year or two years? Absolutely. I'll keep it short, Yogesh, but it's an important question. Uh, what we are trying to do at Infosys is based on the learnings that we have had in adopting uh, the learning platform and the learning thinking. We are also now extending that learning platform uh, for the same cause as Shankar articulated. We have created something called Infosys Springboard, which is available open and free for everyone in India. And we are doing it across the world. So the idea was also to make sure that anyone who is really in need of quality education, quality platform, and a lot of these um, nudges and AI driven recommendations, we are now extending it to the entire uh, world uh, free of cost as a part of our ESG initiative. Uh, we have already seen very good success this year, close to 1.2 million students have registered and we are seeing government adopting this as a part of the digital literacy improvement as well as improving the quality of education and adopting NEP in India. So that is something we are definitely going to keep on uh, further enriching and uh, extending. 
with respect to our own platform we have seen very good adoption within the company uh, statistics are there generally we publish it out anyway but more importantly from future perspective we are looking at creating a lot of exciting uh, ar vr and mr kind of a content rather than a, just a web content or a watching a video a little bit more more like a, a simulated kind of virtual content which will entice and excite people to learn second part which we have experimented over the last two years and now we think we can scale it is the concept of adaptive learning and adaptive assessments which means uh, instead of trying to just give everything uh, to someone even though you have done it as a micro learning can you kind of uh, intelligently kind of tailor it in such a way that what I need now is what I actually get uh, rather than me searching and everything. So that is something we have really made some good strides and we are going to extend that. And the last part is more around uh, the entire focus around creating. Uh, we have created what we call as a digital assistant in lines with Siri and Alexa. We call it Zoe in the company. And we want to make it even more personal, very always on a friend so that uh, the, that Zoe can actually help you with the engaging with your learning, applying that learning in projects and everything. And the last part is uh, we are working again with uh, uh, parts of Shankar's team as well as Sanjay's team on figuring out the mentoring platform and how we can actually get a good mentoring platform that actually serves the purpose of uh, getting that connected and uh, knowledge workers and knowledge uh, and receivers how do you make that very meaningful? So these are some of the things that we are working on, uh, Yogesh. Thanks, Dhruv. Uh, it, it's very exciting to see what you are looking at doing for within Infosys as well as contributing back to the digital infrastructure. And that brings me uh, to your last comment here, Anit. Uh, Anit. Um, so uh, what are the key benefits you, you, you look for from this uh, new learner insights uh, uh, which you have created and uh, what future expansions you will look for. Thanks, Yogesh. I'll keep it short. So I think the big idea here is to, you know, when you uh, we started engaging graduates in seventh semester of the engineering. So from seventh semester, eighth semester to the first six months in the organization, that's almost 12 to 15 months to have an effective analytics driven engagement model of how their learning is going in a blending format is, is is the big picture and what we're trying to do here and some of the benefits we are seeing now and there will be more benefits coming in later is you know real-time view of access to data to all key role players including learning side and business side a uh, health check of learning delivery from effectiveness of learning perspective health check of learner engagement from efficiency perspective to drill down at a individual learner level and most importantly manage all this at scale so that we can try it first with the graduates and then scale it to the rest of our learners across the organization. So those are a couple of some plans, Yogesh. Thank you. Thank you, Anil. Thanks a lot. And uh, so let me thank all of you now. Uh, you know, I think we, we had great insights. Uh, it, it, it kind of, you know, when I go back to my original question on, on achieving outcomes and achieving scale, um, it, it, I have no doubts that platform is a crucial component of, of trying to achieve the two. And we have great experiences here. We have a great future we are looking at. And thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone, uh, for joining us here. Uh, and, and over to you, Dilip. Thank, thank you, Dr. Yogesh. The discussion has very fruitfully summarized the value of this platform's